Hey everyone, thank you again for tuning in. This video is dedicated to those whose first time is coming up with Sailing with Carnival. I have a friend who this is um, dedicated towards. Her name is Crystal. It's her fifth anniversary coming up and her first time cruising with Carnival. For So for her and everyone else whose first time uh, cruising with Carnival, I hope this video helps. All right, so first off, I think most importantly is to download the Carnival Hub app. If you haven't already, and especially if you're fully paid on your cruise, I'd go ahead and download that as soon as possible, just so you don't forget. But with this, they've recently updated it, so you can now do your online check-in through the app as well, which is really convenient. In addition to that, once you're on board, it's gonna show you around, show you different timings for shows, menus, help you navigate the ship. And in addition to that, it also has a cool countdown feature which shows you how many days are left before you cruise. So definitely make sure you download that before you're on board. One quick tip, um, if you can, I strongly advise traveling with your passport. Um, when you go, you don't always have to if it's a closed loop cruise, but it's definitely safer to use your passport. And that's what I prefer. It also expedites the boarding process. If you're flying into your cruise uh, port, I would recommend arriving the day prior. This just gives you more time in case there's delays or cancellations for you to get there and not miss your cruise. Now, as far as parking goes, I recommend doing the park and cruise option where they have different um, vendors who will take you um, from different parking facilities over to the cruise and that'll save you a lot of money. One quick tip for first time cruisers is, especially if you're on a longer cruise, um, five days and up, pace yourself with the food. You're going to have plenty of time to explore all the options and there are tons of options and it can be a little overwhelming, uh, but take your time and each day try something new. That's my advice. Um, and definitely um, be considerate and take care of your staff. They really do do a lot of hard work and they're there to take care of you. Speaking of food, one other tidbit of advice I have is to take advantage of the sea day brunch. If it's a sea day, go down to the main dining room during that day between usually 9 a.m. and I think it's like 11 a.m. and take advantage of the sea day brunch. The menu is spectacular. Make sure that when it comes to the main dining rooms, if there's something you really like, don't be too shy. You can order more than one entree. So keep that in mind. You're not limited to one of anything. You can order two of each appetizer, two of each entree, uh, to your heart's content almost. This is some of the items featured at Cucina del Capitano, one of the specialty dining restaurants on board the Carnival Fleet. If your ship has one, definitely take advantage of it. Specialty dining isn't much more. For a nominal fee, you get a great deal. One thing I love about Carnival is if you want a great view, you can enjoy your breakfast there on the Lido deck. If not, room service is also free too. So keep that in mind for your breakfast. If you feel like staying in or getting some extra rest and, and having your breakfast indoors, you can as well. So do keep that in mind when the perks of Carnival is your room service is largely free, especially for the continental breakfast. Typically the second day on board the ship, they do a show in the morning, and during that show, they usually raffle off and give away prizes of uh, different shore excursions and things like that. You want to be there, my advice is to attend. Depending on which locations you're sailing to, I recommend getting as active as possible. See the sights, go explore um, the excursions. You can find really reasonably ex priced excursions. And they don't have to always be through Carnival as well. The pro with booking with Carnival is that they guarantee that the ship will not leave you. If the tour is late for whatever reason, they're at no risk of being left behind. However, if you book without Carnival or an uh, independent tour contractor, they don't have that same sort of guarantee. So those are the, the main pros and cons. But usually the price is better than independent contractors. I really recommend using your best judgment and making sure that if you do go that route, that they they get you back in a timely manner with plenty of time left. One quick recommendation is the best timing to go to the pool or the hot tubs is typically going to be during your port days when the ship's docked up. Everyone gets off the ship and therefore you get that space to yourself. 
always keep an eye out on the horizon as you never know what you'll see. Um, during the day you may see rainbows, at night sometimes on the, the top decks I'd look up at the stars and every once in a while I saw shooting stars, so it's really neat. Um, but always keep your eyes open, you're always bound to find something to amaze you. People usually ask uh, recommendations for what they should pack or bring. I like to keep it simple. You don't have to bring a whole lot to have a great time. Uh, one thing I recommend is a tumbler uh, for drinks because the cups they have on board Carnivore are a little small and if you want to take a beverage back to your room and not have to run up to Lido Deck, that comes in handy. Um, one other thing is a really good camera. It doesn't have to be expensive, but like for example, this time-lapse uh, video that I took um, was done on my phone. You're always going to get great sights and great memories you're going to want to capture while you're on board. So definitely a good camera, a tumbler, um, a lanyard too you can get online. They sell them on the ships. Some ship cruise lines give them away for free, but Carnival, I would recommend buying one off eBay or Amazon. They have them fairly inexpensive and you can also uh, customize them as well. If you have multiple devices that need to be charged, I recommend using a USB splitter. They no longer allow power strips on most cruise lines, so USB um, splitter is the, the way to go. Um, when it comes to your mobile plan, make sure that while you're on board, your phone is in airplane mode so you don't get any unexpected charges. Now when you're on islands, typically your cell phone provider will send you a text alert to let you know what the policy is for each area or territory that you're in. So just keep that in mind. Carnival is known as the fun ship or home of the fun ships. And they really do live up to that. There's a lot of fun to be had. There's arcades on board. There's the waterworks and all sorts of slides, especially if you're on a newer ship like the Dream Class or the Vista Class, you're in for a great time. So definitely enjoy that. There's lots of activities otherwise as well. There's trivia that's held daily. There's the Hasbro game shows. There's uh, playlist productions where you have your entertainment in the theater every night. They even do movies on the screens outside. So you have a lot of stuff going on. My last bit of advice is just to have fun and try to do as much as possible. Most people who come back not enjoying a cruise, they haven't really done anything. So I recommend going out there and really going for the full experience. Until next time, wishing everyone a great cruise.